Good morning from a very wet and windy Amsterdam. I'm currently at the Hilton Amsterdam Airport Skiffa Hotel, where I've been staying for the past two days doing some aviation photography around the airport. But today it's finally time to check out and make my way back home to Canada. I'll be flying from Amsterdam to Toronto, where I'll be stopping for a day before continuing on to Vancouver. For the first leg of the journey, I'll be flying with KLM on their 787-9 Dreamliner in business class. As we were staying at the airport hotel, it was a quick and convenient walk to the terminal. Business class passengers can take advantage of the sky priority check-in counters. The lines for security were short, so we were able to make our way airside relatively quickly. Time to do some gate spotting. After checking out some of the planes around the terminal, we made our way to KLM's flagship international lounge, the Crown Lounge. The escalator heading up to the lounge was lined with the famous KLM Dutch houses that are offered to all business class passengers. There are over a hundred different designs that are based on real Dutch buildings, so it's quite the collector's item. As for the lounge, it had a very warm and uplifting atmosphere, with wood and marble textures complementing the refreshing splashes of color provided by the various seating areas. I really liked the abundant mood lighting as well as natural light streaming in from the windows. I particularly liked the design of the stairwell leading up to the second floor, making creative use of space for additional seating area while helping to give the lounge some extra depth and personality. The upper floor offers a bar and restaurant with dedicated dining seating areas for you to enjoy some snacks and drinks. Note that the bar only operates from 7am to 1pm. Normally you can visit the outdoor terrace here as well, but at the time of my visit, unfortunately the terrace was closed. If you prefer a more casual dining option, there is a small buffet on the first floor with a mix of hot and cold foods. I wasn't able to check out the recharge, refresh and sleep sections of the lounge due to time constraints, but with the limited time I did spend at the lounge, I really enjoyed it and thought KLM did a great job with the design and layout, with a distinct theme and purpose in each section. And even though the lounge was pretty busy when we went, the fact that the lounge spanned two floors and had a ton of seating options meant that we were still able to maintain a safe physical distance from others. If you're on an international flight flying out of Amsterdam Schiphol, I highly recommend leaving some time to check out this lounge for yourself. After making our way to gate F5, we found our plane loading up for the flight to Toronto a 787-9 Dreamliner, registration Papa Hotel, Bravo Hotel November. Hi. 
Hi. Hi, sir. Welcome on board. 7A. 7A. First half, please. Thank you. Here we are at my seat 7A, a window seat in the second last row of the business class cabin. The dark blue fabric and black leather, accented by the lighter KLM blues, gave the cabin a very sharp and clean look. The seats are arranged in a 1-2-1 reverse herringbone configuration, totaling 30 seats. On this particular flight, the business class cabin was about 75% full. Let's begin with the seat tour. Right in front of you, you have a TV screen that swings out rather violently at the press of this button. You can swivel it up and down to get the right viewing angle, depending on your seat position. Beside the screen, you'll find a nice anodized blue coat hook. You have a leather padded, decently sized footrest with good depth to accommodate taller passengers. Beneath that, a storage area for shoes or a backpack. Underneath the side table, you'll find a literature rack consisting of a sickness bag, a safety card, and a magazine. Above, you'll find a universal power outlet and a USB power port. On the side table was the amenity kit which we'll take a look at later. There was also a bottle of hand sanitizer provided, as well as the menu. These large metal buttons allow you to control the seat, as well as the overhead reading light. The center console opens up to reveal a two-tiered storage area where you'll find a mirror, a water bottle, and the noise-canceling headphones. Further back is the handset to control the IFV. with headphone jacks below. Here's the LED reading lamp, which turns on by pushing the indented circle. On the seat, you'll find a plush pillow. The leather headrest has foldable sides to support your head while sleeping. The armrest on the other side can be extended or stowed at the push of this blue button. Forgot to show this earlier, but the tray table swings out from beneath the side table like so. For some reason, my particular seat had a very stiff table that took a lot of force to fold open. Once in this open position, you can push it forward and back. The tray table is impressively sturdy. One thing I love about this design is that even in the fully open position, it can still slide forward and swing out of your way to let you access the aisle, should you need to use the laboratory's mid-meal. Since we have some time on the ground, let's check out the IFE as well. The screen touch response is great and makes clicking and swiping around very pleasant. There's also plenty of movies and TV shows to keep you entertained on this 8-hour flight. If you're someone like me who likes to track yourself in the world during the flight, you have a fully featured interactive world map. The dockable handset mirrors much of the same functionality, just on a smaller screen. And last but certainly not least, there are individually adjustable air nozzles. Bonus points for that. Just took my seat 7A in the KLM business cabin. Very nice looking cabin. With the seat features out of the way, here's the wing view you can expect from this seat. Our flight time will be an estimate. 
As this flight had Wi-Fi, I decided to purchase a pass for the full flight. It worked well for a while, but after losing connection over the Atlantic, I couldn't get it to work anymore, so your mileage may vary. Coming to one of my favorite parts of the flight, the meal service. Let's check out what KLM has to offer. On this afternoon flight, KLM serves lunch after departure. You have two choices for appetizer and three choices for the main course. Before landing, KLM offers a light meal with two options. Feel free to pause the video if you wish to read the menu in more detail. To start things off, I asked for a cranberry juice and a Coke Zero. This was served with a pack of salted nuts. For the appetizer, I chose the cauliflower curry soup. The cauliflower provided a rich texture and the curry gave it a little kick, which I really enjoyed. You also get a salad, as well as a bread roll on the side. The salt and pepper shakers come in the shape of traditional Dutch shoes, called clogs. I thought this was really cute. For the main course, I originally chose the roasted salmon in miso sauce, but they unfortunately ran out, so I ended up getting the chicken thigh in soy shiitake sauce instead. It was not bad, but it was more like a stew which I would normally not order for a main course, as I don't find them particularly filling. To cap things off, I went for the plate of sweet bites for dessert. This paired really nicely with the coffee. I was really impressed by the design of the silverware they used. Seems like something you'd get at a fancy restaurant. After the meal, the crew came around to deliver this white chocolate in the shape of a Dutch house. And finally, to cleanse my palate, I ordered a refreshing hot green tea. With the first meal service complete, let's check out some of the other amenities. Here are the noise-canceling headphones. I'm not sure what brand they are, but after watching a movie with them, I can say that they do the job quite well. Here is the amenity kit that KLM provides for business class. I'm not going to try to pronounce it because I'll probably butcher the name. If you know how to say it, please educate me in the comments. Included are a pair of eye shades, earplugs, socks, a toothbrush, a little KLM pen, toothpaste, moisturizer, 
and lip balm. I didn't sleep on the flight, but I decided to try out the bedding and the bed mode anyways. Here is the blanket provided by KLM. KLM's business class seats can go into a fully lie flat position. For me, being only 5'7", the seat felt very spacious and comfortable, but the seat should have no problem accommodating even taller passengers. After enjoying a full meal, a visit to the lavatories is in order. For business class, there are two lavatories at the front of the plane. Hair gel, body mist, and body lotion are provided by Tulip and Yuzu, the same brand that supplies the moisturizer and lip balm from the amenity kit. That's actually the first time I've seen hair gel offered in an airplane bathroom. An orange tulip helps to add a nice splash of color. Behind, you'll find a full-length mirror. My favorite part was actually the Dutch house designs flanking the mirror. Very KLM. And with that, I sat back and enjoyed our flight over the Atlantic Ocean, rewatching Wonder Woman while enjoying some snacks and sipping on a few drinks. At one point in the flight, the crew had put out a basket of Stroopwafels at the front of the cabin, so of course I grabbed a few and ordered a coffee to go with it. Apparently putting a Stroopwafel over a cup of hot coffee was a traditional way of eating it, letting the warmth from the coffee heat up the filling inside. After trying it, I don't think I could have it any other way. About an hour and a half before our arrival into Toronto, the light arrival meal was served. I went for the empanada filled with chicken masala. This was served with a side of olives, and for dessert, pastel de nata. I also ordered a glass of apple juice. All in all, a very flavorful light meal which I really enjoyed. Finally, as the crew began to prep the cabin for arrival, they went around to each passenger and offered a selection of the famous Dutch houses that are filled with gin. As mentioned earlier in the video, these houses are based off Dutch buildings that exist in real life, and there are over a hundred designs, with a new design being added every year. This particular house was number 77. They even give you a stamp card to check off all the ones you've managed to collect. Like a light, lighting up in the dark You make it right, I forgot how to act It's so classic Every time you make me nervous and I lose my words It's been a while since I forgot the most simple words
And that's a wrap for my KLM business class flight, and with that another trip report. This was my first time flying with this airline, and I can say that I really enjoyed it. The cabin looked sharp, and the seat layout offered great privacy and abundant storage space. The crew were fantastic, and although I didn't get the choice I wanted for my main meal, the food was actually really good, as I finished everything off the plate. Not to mention, the little Dutch houses are just the coolest souvenir you can ask for. If you're still watching, thank you so much for checking out this video and for your support on this channel. Until next time, thanks for watching, safe travels, and I'll see you in the next one.